wasn't supposed to tell me that. All right, so let's try out the uh, Henderson-Hasselbach equation with example 16.2. Calculating the pH of a buffer solution as an equilibrium problem with the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. Calculate the pH of a buffer solution. That is 0 0.050 molar benzoic acid, Hc7H502, and 0 0.150 molar sodium benzoate for benzoic acid, aka 6.5 times 7 negative fifth. All right. <coughs> so the uh, two equations that we're going to need are the Henderson Hasselbach, pH equals pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. And then although it's uh, pretty easy to remember, the pKa is equal to the negative log of the Ka. Pretty safe bet in chemistry. If you see P something, it's the negative log of whatever that something is. pH, negative log H. POH, negative log OH. pKa, negative log Ka. What do you think the pKb is? Negative log, negative log Kb. So we're going to need that pKa. So let's just calculate that right away. So the pKa is going to equal negative log of the Ka, which is 6.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. 4.2? So just like pH or, you know, 1 to 14, that's going to be your pKa's and pKb's, you know, pretty, you know, integer, small numbers. So yeah, that's probably a good pKa. All right, so let's plug that in to our Henderson hasselbach equation. So our pH equals our pKa, so 4.2. Not happy with that 4. 4.2 plus the log of our concentration of our base. So which one's our base? 0 0.050 or 0 0.150? Benzoic acid or sodium benzoate? Sodium benzoate, the 0 0.150. Benzoic acid, that's a giveaway. That's probably an acid. And so benzoate is its conjugate base. So let's put that 0 0.150 all over 0 0.050, that's concentration of my acid, right? Everybody like that? Yeah. 4.7? Log? Log? Yeah. So you gotta put that in parentheses. So do that division first, then put that in log. So, oh. so like log, parentheses, 0.15 over 0.050, parentheses. Yeah, if you're having trouble with uh, that calculation, uh, you, you can come see me after a lecture and we can try to work on that with your calculator. Sometimes you got to put the number in first, then log. Sometimes it's log, then the number. So just, it's. That's it. That's done. We're done. That's done. Yeah, no ice table needed. All right. <laughs> but one thing we need to do is, well, first, first before we do that, um, let's figure out a way to uh, make sure we're getting the correct answer. All right. One thing you can do is you can accidentally flip this. You can put the concentration of the base on the bottom, concentration of the acid on top. I mean, that's an easy, easy mistake. 
Um, what that will do is that will, the change in pH will be the same, it will just instead of adding 0.5, it would have subtracted 0.5 if you take the log of that reverse, inverse, I guess. Um, one way to double check your answer is to think about if the pH should go up or down in comparison to the pKa. All right, so we use this in the lab and we will use it when we talk about titrations. If the concentration of the uh, acid, HA, equals the concentration of the A minus, the base, that log is zero because that's going to be log of one. Okay, so if that's the case, the pH is going to equal the pKa. So when you're uh, looking at any other buffer where the concentrations aren't equal, we could be able to predict if the pH should be higher than the pK or lower than pK, right? So here we have 0.05 molar benzoic acid, 0.15 molar sodium benzoate. So which one do we have more of? Base. Of the base, we have more of the base. So should our pH be higher or lower? Higher. higher. So yeah, should we should get a number higher than 4.2? 4.7. Okay. If you had more acid, then base the pH should be lower than the pK. So it's one way to double check uh, your answer. So if the concentration of the base is greater than the acid, pH will be greater than the pKa. If the concentration of your acid is greater than the concentration of your base, the pH will be less than the pKa. All right, so the other thing I wanted to do with this problem is just like um, the past four problems, you know, for determining pH, you've got to determine what solution you're looking at when you're calculating the pH, okay? So let's rewrite this problem. Let's rewrite it how I would write it, okay? That's always fun, okay? So again, I don't, I don't call them examples. This would be number three. And again, I don't use number signs, usually. Maybe I should start. Three dot? Yeah. Okay. It's number three. I was thinking if I use prints, or prints. No, I usually go three dot. All right, I don't have titles to my problems. All right. Calculate the pH again. Whoa, whoa, what is? The pH of a buffer solution. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a buffer. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to give you that. Solution that is 0.05 molar benzoic acid, point, okay, four benzoic, no, I would say OBTW, benzoic acid case, okay. But anyways, the reason why I want to write this like this, okay, so you're looking at this problem. What is the pH of blah, 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 okay? You've got to be able to figure out if it's a weak acid or a weak base, strong acid or strong base, or a buffer. What is the telltale sign that this is a buffer and we need to use the P uh, Henderson Hasselbalch equation? What tells you that this is a buffer? It has the two different It has the two different solutions. The buffer is going to have an acid and a base. It's got to have both. And so as soon as you see a solution that has two different concentrations, one's an acid, one's a base, or just two different concentrations, that's going to be a buffer. So that's how you know it's a buffer, to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. The Ka. So the Ka tells you it's a weak acid. Okay. And if we were giving Kb, you would just calculate, just divide by Kw and then you get Ka? Yeah, you could do that. I probably wouldn't give that, but you could. That's exactly how you could do it. Um, so you could, if you're given the Kb, so say you make a buffer with ammonia, you give it Kb, uh, you can calculate the pKa using the Kw equals Ka times